Thank you, everybody. Request the National President of Bulk Drugs Manufacturers Association India, Mr. R. K. Agarwal, to give his welcome address. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry for a slightly delayed start of the program. And also, the Honorable Minister is held up on uh, some other engagement and will be coming later during the day. He, he has assured that he will certainly visit the program. He'll grace the program, and he will be visiting later during the day. So uh, we, we begin the program. So, Chief Guest of today's event, Honorable Minister of Finance, Health and Family Wealth, Sri Harishavaru, Principal Secretary of Commerce, IT and Industries, Sri Jayashanjanji, Secretary Sri Sayyad Murtaja Rijviji, uh, Joint Secretary Dr. N. Yuvraj from the Department of Pharmaceutical Government of India, Deputy Director. Uh, uh, Deputy Drug Controller, CDSCO, Journal Office, Dr. Ram Krishna, State Licensing Authorities, all the invited guests, my fellow industries colleagues, delegates, students, press and print media, I extend my warm greetings and welcome to all of you for this opening ceremony of the national workshop meant for strengthening the pharmaceutical industries. Pharmaceutical industry is a strategic industry contributing significantly to the growth of the nation and besides being importance to the health security of the nation. The pharmaceutical industry has come a long way since the beginning of the around mid-60s when almost entire pharmaceuticals were either imported or manufactured by multinational companies. They had almost, we had almost 90% dependence on the imports, and the medicines were very expensive and beyond the reach of the common man. The setting up of state-owned Hindustan antibiotics and IDPL in Hyderabad in mid-60s, and subsequent modifications to the patent laws in 1970, it changed, it, it, they are the game-changing milestones in the history of uh, Indian pharmaceutical industry. The setting up of IDPL Hyderabad promoted private entrepreneurship and led to the development of this industry in and around Hyderabad. The successive governments in the state and center helped create the ecosystem to enable growth of this pharmaceutical industry and reach where it is today. Today, not only uh, we meet our own healthcare needs, but also export the products to about 200 countries Based on its current ranking, global ranking, it is recognized as the pharmacy of the world. It is ranked as third in volume and 13th in value. India today has largest number of US FDA approved manufacturing sites, about 750 in numbers. Outside the US, it is the highest number, and Hyderabad and the state of Telangana contribute significantly to this growth. Industry is well aware of the fact that the current status of the industry is built around manufacturing uh, low-cost generics, where the country is facing a stiff competition from other Asian economies, developing economies, and the way forward from here has to be through value creation and also through the innovation. We have to overcome the dependence of imports on one single country and uh, uh, for the key intermediates and starting materials. These are challenges which India needs to address, and the role of academic and research institutions is very important in times to come. Its success in addressing these issues coming from will decide the future status of this industry. BDMA invites institutions like NIPER to closely coordinate and work with the industries and be an integral part of this knowledge-based industry. The Indian pharmaceutical industry has touched US dollar 52 billion 
with exports of 24.6 billion and domestic market valued at 28 billion during the financial year 21-22, which has micro, small, and medium enterprises as its key growth drivers of growth and backbone of the pharma production. Backbone of the uh, pharma production. Recognizing the need to encourage and strengthen the pharmaceutical industries, especially MSME units, this workshop is being conducted to serve the following two purposes. Number one, awareness program about the financial assistance schemes which DOP has recently launched for developing the quality infrastructure in MSME units. DOP has recently come out to support the MSME units uh, to improve their quality infrastructure and Mr. Dr. Yuvraj is here to explain and connect with the people so that maximum people can take the advantage and units can upgrade from Schedule M to uh, WHA GMP or higher levels. Number two is recent advances in good manufacturing pra practices. We are thankful to both the central CDSCO and the local drug licensing authorities to, to be, who have assured us that they will help industry to identify the gaps in GMP especially MSME units, they will identify the uh, gaps in the GMP and they will handhold those units to avail these, the, the schemes of the center in order to upgrade their systems. So this is the best situation where the regulating department is helping to, uh, to identify the gaps and uh, to help the units, handhold the units to upgrade their systems. This is the best thing for the industry to happen. Would like to mention about the enthusiasm of our new uh, Deputy Director of Control, the CDSCO Journal Office, Dr. A. Ramakrishna, and the State Drug Licensing Officers who have assured us to work closely with the industry and guide them to upgrade their quality systems. We highly appreciate their dedication and determination for the upliftment of the important industry sector. <laughs> this workshop will directly benefit the MSME industries and will highlight the importance of good manufacturing practices to sustain on global ranking and also finance options available to upgrade, uh, upgrade the quality systems. During recent COVID times, the Indian pharmaceutical industry has amply demonstrated its strength and saved the lives of not only our fellow citizens, but also of the citizens in many other countries where uh, we have supplied our key, key COVID medicines. The industry located in Hyderabad and in the state of Telangana amply contributed to this uh, by way of supply of key COVID medicines such as Remdesivir, Favipiravir, Azithromycin, Doxycycline, Paracetamol, and supply of life-saving COVID vaccines. Now, Bulk Drug Manufacturers Association is a representative body of bulk drug manufacturers and was started in 91. It's about 30 years old and uh, has been actively working since then for, to raise the common issues uh, uh, facing the industry and thus acting as a bridge between the government and the industry. For the growth of industry segment, we have about 300 active members, including global companies, large companies, and 80% of the MSME companies. We have global companies like DRL, Arvindo, and uh, Hitro, and many others, and, uh, and a large number of MSME companies. The association works very closely with the state government uh, on various uh, issues facing the industry, local issues facing the industry, and also with various ministries of the central government, such as chemicals and fertilizers, commerce, health and environment, for resolving common issues in, on, and on drafting new policies for the benefit of the industries. With this brief background, I once again welcome you all for this important workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your speech. I now request the first speaker, Dr. Shashi Bala Singh, Director, Naipur, Hyderabad, to give her speech. Dr. Shashi Bala Singh, Director, uh, I can introduce you, ma'am. Can I introduce you? Thank you. Uh, I would like to introduce ma'am also. Dr. Shashi Bala Singh, Director, National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Naipur, Hyderabad, a distinguished scientist and ex-director general life sciences 
DGLS in Defense Research and Development Organization till 31st May 2018. Prior to DGLS, she was Scientist H, Outstanding Scientist and Director of Defense Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences, DIPAS, Delhi, since 2010. A person with strong will, she has the distinction in, of serving as the Director of Defense Institute of High Altitude Research, Die Hard, Lay, from 2007 to 2010. She is an alumni of All India Institute of Sciences, Ames, where she obtained a PhD degree in human physiology and in 1986, and started her career in DRDO at Diapas Delhi in 1990. She was awarded DSc from Bharatiya University in 2014. Dr. Shashi Bala Singh has worked extensively in the area of high altitude physiology and has made a remarkable contribution in improving the quality of life of soldiers deployed in high altitudes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for a kind introduction. Good morning and namaskar to everyone present here. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, all the stakeholders, my colleagues from Naipur, Hyderabad, and dear students. At the outset, I want to welcome sorry, Chief uh, Principal Secretary, Industry and Commerce, IIT, Telangana, Shri Jayesh Ranjanji. Thank you, sir, for supporting us in all the endeavors. I look forward for your kind support in future also. A very warm welcome to Shri Said Ali Murtubaji, uh, IS, and his Secretary, Department of Health and Family Welfare, Telangana State, and, my, and Dr. N. Yuvraj, IS, Joint Secretary from Department of Pharmaceuticals, Dr. Ramakrishna Ji, Dr. Agrawal, everyone, thank you so much for being with us today, and uh, I feel honored that we are able to host this uh, workshop in the campus of Naipur, Hyderabad. If we look at uh, the pharmaceutical industry or pharma industry, you know, when we go back to about seven decades, government of India took a lot of initiative at that time and they were able to establish the big pharma industry like IDPL where we are working today and you all are part of this uh, campus today. Also Bengal chemicals, Karnataka chemicals, Hindustan by antibiotics. So that time, from that time on, the pharma industry has really grown leaps and bounds. And you know, if you see how it is going to grow, again, the estimates are like Indian pharmaceutical industry by 2030 is expected to be 130 billion US dollar. Then as we know, you know, during the pandemic, I think we have learned a lot, learned a lot and we know health is wealth. And during this period, I think our pharma industry has done an outstanding job by supplying the dr drugs to more than 200 countries and especially to, to the highly regulatory markets like UK, US, Japan. And now we know that there are about 3,000 drug companies and there are about 10,000 plus manufacturing units. And 60% of the vaccine are being produced in India. And, and this pharma industry, the growth rate is about, you know, it is going to grow at the, at the rate of 22.4%. So it's a really a good, uh, bright future pharma industry has, and especially even the bi Indian biotechnology industry, you know, it is estimated by that 2025, it will be $150 billion. Now, you know, we have been growing, uh, main growth has been in the generics. I think this is a time to, to think, to evaluate, and to, to see how we can move forward. It's the time to, to work and grow in areas like complex generics, biopharma, patented drug, cell-based therapy, orphan drugs, and near patent uh, expiry drugs. And if we look at the Hyderabad or the Langana state, I think they have done ex exceedingly well. They are, this Hyderabad is called Burl Drug Capital of India. It is first in that and third in the formulation. You know, now I'm, we have been witnessing many uh, revolution, like green revolution, white revolution, blue revolution. It is a time to think of pharma revolution. You know, I feel we should, from the word, 
world pharmacy, we should be pharma market for the world. You know, we should be offering a cafeteria choice, not only to the Indian market, but to the globe at large. So there's a need uh, to strengthen MSMEs because I feel it's MSMEs have a great role to play. And we also have the directions from our headquarters that we should be collaborating with MSMEs in terms of, you know, what kind of, in terms of R&D solutions to some of their problems. We have some of the MSMEs which are, with whom we are working, but we would definitely like to scale up this activity. And for the sustained growth and you know, being competitive globally, we need to focus on discovery in India, innovate in India, and make in India. And government in India even now has a lot of initiative which has been taken during pandemic, pandemic and post-pandemic for the reasons that we are able to sort of ease out the formulation production at different places. And we know that PILI scheme, which has been already announced by finance minister has a good layout for the pharma industry. Not only this, some of the other government institutes like DBT, DST, ICMR also has a very important role to play and they have been, especially the DBT and DST, you know, to identify critical APIs and KSM and other, and to develop other alternative methods. Because we know during pandemic we have seen, and also even now we are witnessing the import dependency on many of the countries, including China. And as has been said by the Honorable Prime Minister, we need to be self-reliant or atmanirbhar. For this, in the pharma industry, API and SKM and other raw material is one of the key, uh, key points where we need to be innovative and we need to become self-reliant. And I know the government of India has identified 30, 53 key materials which need to be sort of uh, worked out, R&D has to be done so that we are able to produce air, and you will be happy to know, I'm sure you know it also, that 35 of those key materials, APIs, are, have started synthesizing in India. So, uh, so government India is not only doing this, it is promoting creation of bulk drug park with all amenities like water, power, water, analytical testing, to help manufacturer to set up their production unit. And also, you know, uh, also they are, they are encouraging the cluster formation, common facilities they are providing, power, like raw material availability, end-to-end -end solution, it's strengthening backward linkages with the forward linkages. All this is being done, but I would just, uh, they are also focusing on ease of doing business. Because, you know, this is one of the gray area which we need to be working in. In 2014, the ease of doing business, we were 142. Now, in 2019, we are 63. So this also speaks a lot of initiatives which has been taken by government of India. Being the NIPER, I would like to talk a little bit about NIPER. This NIPER came into existence in 2008. We have been here till from that time and now we have 11 departments. We offer PG and PhD programs in 11 uh, subjects. And we are very keenly looking forward for interacting with MSMEs. We, this is one of our mandate, and this will also enable us and enhance our uh, R&D setup, our creativity, and also this will help us and MSE, MSMEs grow together. Uh, I would request all the people, all the stakeholders, if you have time, kindly visit us, kindly uh, know what all we have, what all we can offer. I would be interesting to even interact in the group so that you know we are able to work together. We want you and you also need us. I think it's a more of a synergy or symbiotic relationship which we want to have with MSMEs because I know MSMEs is, is you know, most of the industry, they may be looking for small little solutions for some of their R&D efforts. And we can be there with you. And I look forward for uh, good interaction. With this, I want to close because there are other speakers who will be talking. And I want to thank uh, BDMA, especially Dr. Agrawal, for uh, for hosting this uh, workshop here. And thank you so much, Jain. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your address. I now request Dr. A. Ramakishan, MD Pharm, PhD Pharmacology, TIPS, FTAS, FIPA, FAPAS, Deputy Drug Controller India, Central Drug Standards Control Organization, Zonal Office Hyderabad, Ministry of Health and Welfare, Government of India, to deliver her speech. Thank you.
chief guest of today's national symposium on good manufacturing practices sri harish rao ji and respected secretary health our sayed murtuja rizvi ji very proactive and dynamic secretary health looking up to drug control administration government of telangana principal secretary industry and commerce sri respected jayesh ranjan ji and very dynamic joint secretary department of pharmaceutical council of ministry of chemicals and fertilizers government of india dr yan yuvraj ji naipur director sri sheshbala singh all captains of pharmaceutical industries chief executive officers of pharmaceutical industries all senior people sitting of the dais naran reddy ji and dr venkat jatri ji ex bdm president jayendra thakur ji and all important ceos and innovated quality assurance quality control production manager utility in charge and special invitees and all my drug control colleagues from the government of telangana all four shrinivas and other people and my colleagues from cdso journal office hyderabad dr rajshekar kamal krishna haldar ddc in charge from Kal Kal kalkatta and all my uh, sarla devi and our kishor ji from krishna patnam port and all people are uh, invited from regulatory department and the dynamic president national president rajkumar agarwal ji rk agarwal ji because of his consistent and sheer hard work today we all club ministry of chemicals and fertilizers department of commerce and industry department of pharmaceutical chemicals and fertilizer small scale small industries development bank of bank of india sidb where they are giving lot of financial assistance to micro medium small scale industries across the country and our health secretary and principal secretary both are here so i can share the important overview of today's important outreach national program on strengthening pharmaceutical industries in msme micro small medium scale enterprises and also cluster development programs across the country how many clusters we are having across the country in that department of pharma enacted in the year 1990 and on 2nd april from that onwards and from that day to 2008 they have elaborated with all comprehensive guidelines with respect to strengthening pharmaceutical industry through various mechanism schemes to promote clusters across the country and fortunately one of the best uh, cluster in hyderabad situated in genome valley where 65% of the vaccines are being produced please give a big hand to the government of telangana and andhra pradesh andhra pradesh also taking lot of medical devices in vitro diagnostic kits in amtg at visakhapatnam so these are the strengths and in addition to that and andhra pradesh and telangana considered to be one of the hub for the production of important active pharmaceutical ingredient what we call apis bulk drugs so jain sab time jain thakur ji ex idm ml bdm director and during the uh, tenure of dr pv apaji pharmaxil so they took lot of initiatives and we are having global recognition in india if you can see we are having total global market 1200 billion dollar out of that we are contributing 24 billion dollar for export remaining 21 billion dollars taking care of the domestic so we are having huge potential and we thought an idea why don't we sensitize all our industry people through our bdm association so that we can club all four five ministries at one place and we can exchange and as a regulator because lot of people having some apprehension with respect to regulatory uh, approvals are concerned but now things are changing on behalf of drugs control general india office ministry of health and family welfare we are all here to facilitate with respect to various apex bodies are concerned that commitment i can give and dr vg somani sir drugs control general india given his important greetings to this important audience we are all here to facilitate government of telangana and government of andhra pradesh because our zone covers both state so they are so proactive under the dynamic leadership of our rizvi sir we can do miracles in order to ensure quality purity identity strength and efficacious pharmaceutical formulation including bulk drugs that is reason why we are all here 
this is the overview and we are going to have the technical session. I will not take much time, but as a moderator, we have selected what are the important areas we have to focus, what is meant by GMP, what are the new principles adopted by World Health Organization Geneva as per the World Health Assembly Resolution 41.12 and 61.22, how we can promote patient health and patient safety with respect to quality movement of drugs. Therefore, WHO TRS 1033 55th report of 2021 is the latest update with respect to describing important principles, methodologies, technologies involved with respect to carrying out detailed quality control testing to ensure quality drugs. Therefore, we have to promote the public health. As a regulator, we are all here and we need support, blessings from all the industries located in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, when they are having proactive policies, government of India is committed to facilitate for the benefit of all poor, vulnerable population across the country. Thank you very much for giving you the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for the powerful speech. I now request Dr. N. Yuvraj to come over onto the dais and say a few words. Dr. N. Yuvraj, IAS, is the Joint Secretary Department of Pharmaceuticals, Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India. He's a 2005 batch IS officer of AP Canada. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. So, good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I uh, thank BDMA for organizing this workshop in coordination with Niper Hyderabad and also with other industry players. So it's a well-organized event today and the, it is a tightly, tightly packed event till the evening. So we don't want to take much time in the inauguration, but uh, otherwise it's a good event. And I personally thank uh, Sri J. Sanjan sir, Principal Secretary sir, for coming this uh, occasion and uh, gracing this occasion and uh, uh, providing necessary support for the successful implementation of this scheme and also I thank our Rajini sir for, uh, uh, for providing necessary comfort also to make this uh, program successful. And I also know that we have uh, CDC's office here, regional office, which is providing necessary support for this event. And also we have our uh, state, reg state regulators offices also under the Rajini sir who has providing necessary support. And uh, we have been told this, we have a uh, full day session here and uh, I will be there in the technical session also to provide necessary guidance. So I don't want to go into details of the schemes now, but as we've been told, India is a pharmacy of the world. We are moving, uh, we are moving in a good trajectory, thanks to the uh, industries located in 10 to 12 states, and uh, Andhra, Telangana, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Sikkim, Himachal, being the lead states uh, due to the ecosystem prevalent in that particular state. So as you know that uh, uh, the pharma industries also has thousands of MSME industries for both forward and backward linkages. And uh, today's uh, technical session is on assisting these MSME clusters as well as the industries to upgrade their quality or uh, technical upgradation. Basically, as per the study done by WHO in 2016, out of 6,000 plus MSMEs in pharma sector, 1,285 were WHO GMP. So there is a huge gap of almost like a 4,000 plus during to 2016 itself. Now the data may be updated, but still we have large gap. So Government of India through as programmatic intervention tries to upgrade the existing MSME pharma units, their standards, either to Schedule M or to WHO GMP, and if possible to higher standard like PICS or other standards also. So that is a main purpose of the scheme. The scheme is a credit linked scheme. Uh, so uh, I request all the MSM industries who are coming today in huge numbers. Uh, I've been told by uh, President that uh, we have almost uh, 250 industry people have come here. I request you to participate in the technical sessions and uh, get uh, required clarifications and also know how to apply other things so that you can avail the benefits. This scheme is intended to support almost up to 500 units across the country. So it is also on first come first service basis. So. We are organizing these sort of events in across the country in 10 places. This is the sixth place. We have two, four more states to do. Uh, 
the applications are already being invited. So it is uh, there in the website, which will give in the technical session. So I request you to make avail of this particular workshop, especially both on GMP as well as on the scheme side also. And also we, uh, pharma industries, other than the individual scheme, we also have a cluster scheme, which is cluster for the purpose of R&D. And also for the lab side, we are going to support. As I told, uh, the common infrastructures, most of the state government provides the support for common infrastructure like uh, roads, drains and all. So we are planning to support the cluster for CETP either for upgradation or to have a new CETP plans as well as for the lab and other things also. We have a successful model which I will elaborate in the technical sessions. Uh, and more, one more thing is NIPER. So NIPER is here, Madam is here. But most of the R&D facilities, you can involve the NIPERs. We have seven NIPERs across the country under the government of India. But uh, one is located here since it is operating in 2008 in the IDPL premises, you know IDPL is over in there in the field of pharma. They can never forget about IDPL because whoever they can trace their origin to IDPL only. But uh, NIPER is the one area which is which is uh, with, the, with the support of the state government. The land is given, 50 acre land is given for NIPER. The uh, building will come up very shortly here. So I request all the industries, both MSMEs as well as big industries to involve NIPERs in their industry academia collaboration so that both can be benefited. Both you also will be benefited and also our NIPER also will be benefited. We have around 500 students. They're all young, uh, energetic and they can avail the benefits of the close coordination with the uh, industry. And once again, thanking uh, Rizvi sir and uh, Jay Sanjan sir for the cooperation. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Shri Syed Ali Murtaza Rizvi, IAS, posted as secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of Telangana. He is the secret, also the Secretary of Health, Medical and Family Welfare Department of Telangana, Government of India, and is from the 1999 batch of IAS officers. I request him to please come down and share a few words with us. Secretary, Principal Secretary, Industry, uh, Jayesh Ranjan, sir, uh, Sri Yuvraj, Joint Secretary, Pharmaceuticals, Government of India, Sri Agarwal, uh, President of the Bulk Drug Manufacturers Association, Director of uh, NIPER, and uh, Sri Ram Krishna, Joint Director, PDSCO, all the other distinguished guests, very good morning to all of you. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, the Department of Pharmaceuticals and the CDSCO for inviting me here for this very important uh, session. I would like to congratulate the Department of Pharmaceuticals for having come out with a very important and timely scheme, which will go a long way, I believe, in strength, further strengthening the pharmaceutical sector in Hyderabad. Already you have heard, and you all know, that Hyderabad is one of the most important locations of the pharmaceutical sector in the country. Apart from all the big uh, names that are there, the MSME sector also plays a very crucial role in the pharmaceutical uh, area arena state of Telangana and these two components which are there in this newly formulated scheme, one which will uh, encourage the development of common infrastructure and the other one which will help the individual MSMEs to improve their internal processes, strengthen them, to acquire GMP capabilities, etc. These both of these components will be definitely very helpful in uh, further improving the competitiveness of our uh, units, not only domestically but also internationally. So I would like to once again congratulate the Department of Pharmaceuticals for this landmark scheme. I hope that during the course of this session, um, there will be enough awareness built so that the scheme will be utilized to the maximum extent possible in our state. As far as the, uh, the health medical 
Domatsa. Shri Jayesh Ranjanji is an IS officer from the 1992 batch serving in Telangana as Principal Secretary, Industries and Commerce and Information Technology, Departments of Government of Telangana. He works in the field of developing policy frameworks, attracting new investments, identifying opportunities for utilization of information technology in various government processes and promoting the digital empowerment of the citizens. He holds, he holds a master's degree in psychology from Delhi University, business and, uh, management from Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta, and a master's in public management from National University of Singapore. He's a part of the National Pool of Trainers in Leadership, constituted by the Government of India, and is involved in training and mentoring new civil servants. I welcome him and request him to come over and deliver this speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. S.A.M. Rizvi, Dr. Yogaj, Mr. R.K. Adarwal, Dr. Ram Sikhadaro, Dr. Sashivala Singh, senior representatives of the BDMA, Pharma Industry, all the invitees, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I am delighted that the Department of Pharmaceuticals has brought together such a comprehensive and useful scheme focused primarily on the MSME. We do know that the industry has the poster boys of the industry are large players, but the backbone of this industry are actually the MSME. And uh, to have a dedicated scheme for MSME is very important. And as will be explained to you later, there are three components of this scheme. And I'll also offer some uh, observations and comments on all the three components. But what is more important is that, as I was uh, being told by Dr. Yoga, in the past also there have been similar schemes, but the utilization of those schemes was, was, uh, was rather limited. And therefore, this uh, outreach attempt to make you familiar with the scheme and help you in filing applications under this scheme. And the other important component, of course, there is a concurrent workshop happening which focuses on food manufacturing practices, on how you reach global standards, etc. Now, uh, there's a couple of things which I wanted to share with you. One is that some of you would be aware that in the government of India, there's a dedicated ministry for MSME. And uh, they have a scheme which is similar, which is called the CDP, the Cluster Development Program. And uh, uh, Telangana is one of the states which has received large number of approvals under the CDP. We have a very good track record of implementing the CDP program completing them on time and uh, delivering very good quality outcomes there. So I'll share with you some of the learnings of that particular scheme. How is that scheme working so well? And what can we learn? Because uh, eventually, unless we submit lots of applications, we get sanctions, we implement them on job, there will be no purpose of uh, ministry announcing these schemes and we just uh, listening passively about those schemes, etc. Similarly, the second component in this particular package here, uh, which relates to technology upgradation. The textile ministry also has a similar scheme, which is called TUFS, T-U-F-S. And uh, again, the state of Telangana has received uh, lots of sanctions under TUFS. And I'll again share some experiences of TUFS with you. How did we get that? And what is the, what is the, the thing, experiential learning for the pharma industry for that? So as I mentioned, there are uh, three sub-components of this scheme. The first component, which is called uh, Assistance to Pharmaceutical Industry for Common Facility, APICS, is basically to help a cluster. If there is a cluster and you require some common facility, then uh, that this particular scheme can be made useful. Now the key of uh, this particular scheme is that the industry or the industries in a particular cluster have to form an SCB. And uh, when I was speaking about the MSME CDP scheme, in many cases, what we have done is that along with the industry which have their CSIAC, which is our Industrial Infrastructure Corporation, they have also become a partner in that uh, SCB. Of course, 
we have the requirement is that the industry must have at least 55, 51 percent equity, which is completely fine. And if you want, TSIIC can also become a partner because eventually whatever common facility that you are sanctioned, you will have to get it implemented through some engineering uh, agency. And uh, the state infrastructure corporation, as you know, has enough engineering capabilities. They have done uh, large, humongous engineering projects. So this is one thing. The second is that in the SPV also, the in the in the past we have seen the common facility has utilities for some MSMEs, which is more than some other MSMEs. So one issue which comes there is how do you share the contribution of the promoters? And in some of the MSME clusters, we have found some very interesting formula, some very interesting arrangements to which the contribution of each of these uh, SPV members are made. And I can, if a similar kind of situation arises in any of these partner clusters, uh, we can we can guide you on how to structure that SPV, etc. So that disproportionate burden. I'm going to get limited results out of it, but I'm being asked to contribute much more, which creates some kind of dissonance, and eventually the SPV does not take off, or it runs into some challenges, etc. The other Required. The other thing which I have noticed in some of the uh, other projects of MSME CDP is that sometimes they request for some government contribution and we also match some funds. So just as uh, the ministry will provide some funds here, the state government also adds some funds. And uh, in our state budget also, there is a broad in principle agreement that for any centrally sponsored scheme, if a state share has to be added, invariably it gets through. So we don't face much challenge getting that state share. So my suggestion will be that let us identify, we can help you, uh, BDM of course, I expect them to play a lead, but we can also help you in mapping which are the important industry clusters. We know that there are uh, old industrial parts which are uh, inside the OR. We may not focus too much of infrastructure projects there because eventually our hope is that all those partner units which are inside the OR, they will eventually shift to the new partner city which is coming up. But we know that there are lots of clusters, for example, in Nalgota district, Chautupal, towards this Jatkedra, and in so many other directions also, where we have uh, clusters of pharma industries, buzzword industries. And those will be the locations where uh, lots of these facilities will be, will be utilized. And uh, we know that uh, lots of uh, common facilities can be created in these kind of uh, locations. So let us do this exercise as quickly as we can. I would request uh, BDM to take the initiative and uh, sit with us with TSIIC, map all these locations, identify what is missing, develop project reports with our help, and let us target that. Just as we are the, the leaders in various other, on various parameters of the pharmaceutical industry, the Telangana also come on the top in utilizing this particular scheme of uh, strengthening of pharmaceutical index. The other uh, scheme, which is, uh, as I told, it is similar to the textile scheme called TUPS, which is called Pharmaceutical Technology Upgradation Assistance Scheme, PTUAS. This is again a very relevant scheme, and uh, as Dr. Ramkrishna and others have pointed out, the necessity to improve our technology is very, very important. I, I'm sure many of you know this, but I was uh, really taken aback. Some months ago, I was attending a, uh, some kind of an international conference where uh, it was an online conference, and where I heard many participants from other countries mention that if the manufacturer, if the source is not following internationally acceptable sustainability focused practices, we will stop importing from those countries and those countries. So today, as uh, all of us know, our pharma industry, apart from domestic sales, we also get good returns from our exports. But imagine a situation in which uh, many European countries start banning exports from you because you don't follow sustainable manufacturing processes. In fact, that conference which I was attending was focusing a lot on uh, AMR. And they were mentioning that uh, if the AMR problem uh, remains, they will, I mean, they did not mention that they will ban India, but I mean, it, it, I got the sense that uh, there will be serious reper repercussions if uh, good manufacturing practices, WHO standards are not adopted. So it is just a matter of, of 
upgraded the technology. Unfortunately, the good seam has come, and uh, we benefit from this seam because tomorrow, if you don't upgrade, we will run into a very, very big risk. The third thing is called the pharmaceutical and medical devices promotion and development scheme, PMPDS, which also is a useful scheme because it can help uh, the people who are particularly, I see lots of value for the medical devices manufacturers under this scheme. As you know, Telangana is a great entrant in medical devices, particularly the first of all, the size of this industry was smaller in, in our country relative to other neighboring countries. But which is whatever this is, little industry that was available in our country, it was largely in Tamil Nadu and four or five other states. There was very little of medical devices manufacturing in our state. But many of you would know that since the last six, seven years in particular, Telangana has pushed this sector also very aggressively. We have created a dedicated medical devices park in Sultanpur uh, on the outer ring road. Forty plus companies have taken uh, slots in that park, including global uh, players like uh, SNP, etc. And uh, almost 17 companies have started their manufacturing. Cementing also are constructing their facilities. Looking at their examples, many others are meeting us and submitting their application. We have decided to expand the medical devices part by adding another uh, 200 acres in Sultanpur. So this industry definitely has lots of uh, promise. And Telangana, just as three years ago, we became the leaders in the pharmaceuticals, the bulk drugs, and two decades ago, in the biotechnology industry, the vaccine sector. We can become the leaders in medical devices also. And uh, the only question which most of the manufacturers take with us is that what kind of market, market support is possible? Can the state buy some of the products which they are manufacturing locally? Or can we help them or facilitate in getting this market access? So this particular theme, theme will be very useful in conducting seminars, conventions, exhibitions to showcase what Telangana's medical devices industry is capable of to showcase our progress and uh, therefore help them in getting deeper market access, etc. So I once again uh, request the industry. The ministry has created the scheme. The ball has been thrown in our court, but let us not let them down. With the help of Telangana government institutions like PSILC, Pharma, uh, our uh, life sciences uh, promotion society, let us make best use of this scheme. And uh, I would also request Dr. Yuvraj, who is here, to keep uh, taking feedback on these things because the MSME PDP also, some years ago, the cutoff limit was 10 crores. The maximum assistance they used to give was 10 crores. But now, recently, they have enhanced it to 30 crores. So you also, please, uh, yeah, you are at 20. So unless you bring it uh, in parity with other schemes, people may be more tempted to go there rather than come here. So please get uh, some kind of study done. And I guess in that uh, MSME PDP also, city plays an important role. They are the ones who do project evaluation, etc. So they are involved in this scheme as well. And I'm sure their officers who are here will be able to guide you on how to make this scheme even more attractive and competitive. But once again, I'm happy that uh, so many industry representatives are attending this conference. Please uh, participate in all the knowledge sessions, technical sessions that we follow. Particularly, the ones which will be focusing on GMP, etc., are extremely critical to us. So please think about it very seriously and bring that into action as early as we can. So thank you very much for inviting me and good wishes for the rest of the conference. Thank you so much, sir, for the inspiring words and advice. Thank you. Um, I now request Sri Jayesh Ranjanji to uh, present the mementos. Um, we have first um, Sri uh, present the memento to Sri Said Ali Murtaza Rizvi, IAS, Secretary of Health, Telangana. A big hand, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, kindly, sir, present the next memento to Dr. N. Yuvraj, IAS, Joint Secretary, Department of Pharmaceuticals. Thank you, sir.
So kindly present the next memento to Dr. A. Ramakrishnan, Deputy Drugs Controller, Central Drug Standard Control Administration. So I request you to next give the memento to Dr. Shashi Bala Singh, Director, Naipur, Hyderabad. A few more mementos. I'll be troubling you, sir, with a few more. Uh, Shri Shakti Nagpan, Director, Life Sciences, Telangana State, and CEO. He's not come. He's not come? He's not okay, sorry. He's not there. Yeah. We'll move on ah. to the next ah. one. Yes. Shri G. Ramdhan, Deputy Director, Drug Controls Administration, Telangana State. Please come and receive the memento. Uh, next, Shri Rajavardhana Chari, Deputy Director, Drug Control Administration, Telangana State. Uh, next, Srimati B. Sobhagya Lakshmi, Deputy Director, Drug Control Administration, Telangana State. Sarla has not come. I think she has not come. Okay. Is Ms. P. Sarla present with us today? Ms. Srimati P. Sarla, Deputy Director, Drug, Drug Control Administration, Telangana State. Please join us. She is not here. Okay. Uh, next, no, no, I would yeah, request yeah. Uh, Shri Raj Shekhar, Nailing. Additional Drugs Nailing. Controller. I think he is also not available with us. <laughs> Central Drug Standard Control Organization, Hyderabad, to please collect the memento. Thank you, sir. Uh, I now request uh, a representative from our title sponsor, Mrs. Arubindo Farmer, anybody, any representative, to kindly come over and collect the award. Sorry, the momentum. I now request Associate Sponsor, Natco Pharma Limited, any representative present here, to please come over and collect the award, on uh, the momentum on behalf of Natco. Next. I now request a representative from Surwin Pharma to please come over and collect the momentum. Natco. Ms. Um, P. Sarla Devi, Assistant, Direc Assistant Director, Drugs Controller, CDS CO, is present, present, present with us today. Kindly come and collect the momentum. Thank you so much. So one second, sir. Sarla Devi, please. Our associate sponsor, uh, Natco Pharma, is here, a representative. Kindly come over, sir. What is the name? The name is the Natko. Kamal Krishna. This is Natko. Natko is that? Kamal Krishna. Keep it. Come here. Come here. 
Our representative from Surven Pharma, can you please join us? Our associate sponsor, kindly come over and collect the memento. Surven Pharma. Thank you, sir. Uh, next sponsor, Virko Labs. Uh, kindly come over, sir, if anybody's present here. Mr. Vamsi. Big hand, big hand. Thank you. Uh, Sri Krishna, pharmaceuticals representative. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Krishna Reddy, kindly come over and collect the memento. Next, Mr. Srinivas Raju, Chorus Labs, kindly come over and collect the memento. Now request Dr. Kamal Krishna Haldar, DDC, Kolkata, to please join us um, and collect the memento. Thank you, sir. I now request our uh, president to hand over the memento to Sri Jayesh Ranjan Ji. Thank you, sir. I now request Sri P. Anupveer, General Secretary, BDMA, to give the vote of thanks. Morning, everybody. Uh, it's my privilege to render the vote of thanks for this inaugural ceremony of the outreach program on strengthening of pharmaceutical industry scheme in MSME sector and pharma clusters of Department of Pharmaceuticals, Government of India, and National Seminar on Recent Advances in Good Manufacturing Practices 2022, Post-COVID Challenges and Opportunities. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, Shri Jayesh Ranjanji and Shri Syed Ali Murtaza Rizviji, we are grateful uh, to the both of you, senior IAS officers of Telangana State, for attending this function, for gracing this function, and giving your valuable advice. Your cooperation and guidance to the industry fraternity are widely praised and encourages not only the current generation but also the youngsters to think of establishing the industry as startups and going forward. We look forward, sirs, for your continued guidance and support for our future endeavors as well. We are thankful to Dr. N. Yuvraj, IS Joint Secretary, Department of Pharmaceuticals, Government of India, who has visited uh, to grace this occasion uh, from Delhi and attend the program. We also look forward to the continuous support of the DOP to the industry, sir. Dr. A. Ramkishan, we are all indebted to uh, Dr. Ramkishanji, uh, Deputy Drugs Controller, Central Drug Con uh, CDSCO, Government of India, for his initiative and cooperation to assist us in arranging this workshop for the benefit of the industry. <laughs> Sir, with your positive approach to the industry, I am sure we are all going to uh, take it much better going forward. We will do we will do better. We thank you for your support, sir. 
We're also very thankful to uh, Dr. Shashibala Singh for the support given to us in hosting this uh, venue over here. Thank you very much, madam, and other facilities to conduct outreach program and national workshop successfully. We also thank Dr. Ramdan, Deputy Director, Drugs Control Administration, Telangana, for having accepted uh, our, minute, our invitation and being a part of this workshop, uh, and we hope to run this smoothly. My respectable thanks are due to CDSCO, Zonal Office Hyderabad, Drug Control Administration, Telangana, Farm Excel, and Naipa Hyderabad, as they are the collaborating partners of this event and have extended their full support. We are also grateful to the sponsors of this workshop, uh, the title sponsor, Messrs. Aravindo Pharma, and associate sponsors, Natco Pharma, Suven Pharma, Virko Laboratories, Sri Krishna Pharma, and Porus Laboratories. Without their support, this, this would have been a lot more challenging to, uh, to accomplish. We thank you, sir, for your support. We also appreciate, the, appreciate and thank the hard work put in by the staff of BDMA in making complete arrangements to conduct this event. Uh, and without thanking all of you over here, attending this, taking your time out, and trying to learn and, and uh, add value to our industry, uh, obviously, this is, this is the success of the event. Thank you very much, uh, all of you, for being over here. I'm sure that the ensuing technical uh, sessions by eminent speakers will, uh, who will impart their knowledge to the participants, we look forward uh, for the same in making this uh, event a success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anupri. Uh, the second session is going to start shortly, within the next five minutes. I request uh, all of you to please the dignitaries to come and have a seat. Um, Thank you, sirs. We'll just take two minutes to set up the table. The awareness programs will start shortly. I need to see it here somehow. You have to ask the organizer. 